What is happening, Gothamites? Welcome back to the O1 channel, and I felt nostalgic, so it's time to learn stuff while punching crime in the face. This is Arkham Sunday. So the Battenson Batman skin is now available on all consoles. It was originally a limited time exclusive on Nintendo Switch, and uh, I really don't want to show you the Nintendo Switch version of the suit, but I will say this, the suit that we got for free, which thank you Rocksteady, right in time for Christmas, is okay, although you might notice a few problems with the suit. Mainly, Battenson's Batman is a vampire. He casts no shadow and probably no reflection in a mirror. <laughs> I don't know why they did this, but <laughs> he has no shadow. Oh, it's kind of funny. So let's go over the Batman 2022 suit. We have here what looks like Party City uh bottom parts of you know like that halloween costume you would get as a kid and uh, you would get boots underneath he's got kind of these gray slacks uh military style pants almost looks kind of green but they definitely look more green on nintendo switch his grapple gun is located there he has his knockout darts over there along with some blades uh, fashion to help cut like knives and if he came across swords but he hasn't his utility belt is fashioned with a little bit of emergency medicine his flashlight He's got his adrenaline shot in there, as well as uh, some other small, like, lockpick gadgets and things like that. His only batarang that we know of so far, slash knife, is in the center of his insignia, which he can pull out and throw at people. His cowl is, like, hobbled together from uh, different, uh, we'll say, pieces of leather and probably Kevlar. Uh, in the Batman movie, you can actually see... Um, sewing incisions as well as staples, but can't really see that detail even on the uh, PS5 that we're currently using. But this suit in particular uh, definitely gives that whole Matt Reeves thing where he says, yeah, this thing is hobbled together, uh, the bat suit. It's taken from different parts of both military, police officers, firefighters, and for whatever reason, that weird um, neck collar thing, which I still don't like. And... Um, I, I don't know. I mean, everybody really enjoys this bat suit. I guess for, like, the first entry in the Matt Reeves trilogy, it's not bad. But um, I still prefer Bale's suit, especially his uh, Dark Knight suit. And the Batman Begins suit was actually really great. I loved how they uh, showed Alfred and Bruce putting the suit together. You never really see the creation of the bat suit. Batman just is Batman. Now, according to the novelization of the Batman, the cape is actually made of a flame-resistant material. So, for some extent, Batman could actually um, encompass his body and drape the cape around him, you know, run into a burning building and he would be okay. Batman's gadgets in the 2022 The Batman movie are very practical. Um, they are very, we'll say, simplistic in what they do. Um, Batman uses them mostly for crime scene investigation. He carries around, I believe, a pair of handcuffs. He has a flashlight, he's got a material that's used in order to see fingerprints, he's got some um, gadgetry that is like tech-based for computer stuff, which we don't really see very much, but he does bust it out when he's using the back computer that's built into his uh, Roadster or Hot Rod or whatever you want to call his Batmobile. Um, so he has some stuff like that. Lock picks. he's got a material used to break into places, like a little bit more silently. Uh, something like a cat burglar would use. His gloves are fashioned with those weird uh, kind of like bat darts that he only used sparingly. He also carries around parts for his grapple gun, which he doesn't use all that much in the movie, but uh, he did in the novelization. He has a first aids kit that you do not see in the film, um, but that's where he gets his adrenaline shot from, which wasn't a big fan of the whole adrenaline thing, to be honest. I thought that was kind of stupid. Um, especially because later on Matt Reeves said, yeah, no, he's not using Venom, um, which would have been nice if they actually showed, you know, Bruce Wayne being dependent of this drug, uh, which tied into later Chuck Dixon's appearance for Venom. So it was a great uh, little Batman storyline to show that, yes, he did use um, abilities to enhance his strength and stuff like that early on in his career, but he decided against it because basically he became uh, dependent on it. So... When I saw in the movie that Matt Reeves' Batman was using a type of adrenaline, immediately I was like, oh my gosh, they just introduced Venom, so maybe they're going to do their own take on Bane eventually in this trilogy. But nope, just turned out to be regular adrenaline. 
Uh, other Batman gadgets and tools you've seen him use in other movies. Matt Reeves has said that that stuff is also included in his makeshift utility belt, as well as gadgets that he can't carry with him. He keeps in his bat bunker or bat cave, whatever you want to call it. Um, already learning not to overload himself in the field, according to the novelization of the Batman. But anyway, uh, I just thought I would, you know, add that little addition to my video. Enjoy! So anyway, um, Batson's bat suit is based after the 2022 The Batman, not to be confused with the 2004 The Batman cartoon. And I don't, I, I don't know. I don't like the suit. If I'm being completely honest with my opinion, uh, I, I don't know if eight years was worth um, a new Batman suit that just looks okay. Oh my gosh, I'm not used to things being a sputtery mess anymore. So if you haven't known this or not, I've actually been playing Arkham Knight over on Nintendo Switch on my Let's Play channel. And, um, man, what, what can I say about the Nintendo Switch version of this game? It's, uh, unique, I guess you would say. Um, for one thing, I mean, I'm so used to the game basically performing like it's underwater. So this is, this is an experience for me. Uh, it's nice to actually be able to play a game again that, oh, I don't know, responds to the things that I want to do, for the most part. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, Battinson's Batmobile is not in this game, obviously. But what I was trying to say before, what I'm surprised about is, once again, we're only getting a Batman skin. And I know that, you know, Batman is the only character that's available in free roaming, but one of my biggest criticisms with Arkham Knight back in the day was the fact that um, you had all these movie costumes for Batman, like Bale and Keaton, and you would have Catwoman as playable, but she only has three costumes. And she never got her Keaton Batman Returns costume or her Anne Hathaway Dark Knight costume, and I think that would have been actually pretty cool. But uh, they never went around and did that. And uh, you still have people always, you know, saying, hey, you know, I want that 60 frames per second Batman thing, but people have to understand, they've been asking about this for quite some time, and it still hasn't happened. And, uh, I don't really see them ever updating this game again. In fact, most people probably won't be thrilled with Rocksteady, uh, in the future when, um, you know, Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League comes out. And there's been people sworn to secrecy about, you know, certain aspects of the game, and, like, if it plays well or not because of the NDA that happened to people that played the game. Um, I didn't get a chance to play the game, so I can't really tell you. A fan of mine gave me the code, but I just ran out of time. Um, I've been getting a lot more tired recently because I'm older now. Um, older and wiser, but literally my body is older, which sucks. Um, it's like, you used to be able to stay up after a live stream and uh, record videos for you guys or news videos at like, I don't know, 3 or 4 in the morning. And now after my last live stream of the night over on the uh, Let's Play channel, I'm, I'm done. Uh, literally, I, I crawl up to bed by 3 in the morning and I sleep until about 7, 7.30, get up, make the YouTube short, stay up for a little bit, make the newsletter, and then I go back to bed until, you know, the next, like, stint of 6 to 8 hour live streams, and that's it. So, um, this is kind of new for me, actually, recording during the day. So, the gray ghost. Oh, it's so nice to be able to drive a Batmobile that's not a sputtery mess, I'll tell you what. Uh, this is nice. All those people saying, well, you always drove the Batmobile bad. It's like, not as bad as an Arkham Knight on the Switch. Like, literally stops and goes every 15 seconds or so. It's super annoying. Ah. Uh, so, anyway, the cape detail of Battinson's suit looks great. In terms of lore for this suit, watch the, uh, 2022 The Batman movie, and, uh, you'll see some stuff. But, they actually don't really tell you a lot about the suit anyway. You actually have to read the novelization of the book, uh, which I don't know if it's considered canon or not. It was a coffee table book that came out uh, right around the time the movie released. And the the book is okay, but again, it kind of contradicts a lot of stuff that happens. And if you read uh, the actor who played Riddler, which, I don't know, Riddler's performance was just kind of meh for me. I didn't like the whole, like, Zodiac Killer thing. That's not the Riddler for me. If you want to do the Zodiac Killer for Calendar Man, that's more, you know, his M.O. But Riddler is supposed to be a guy who's obsessed with puzzles, and it's not supposed to be like the Shawshank Redemption type thing, or Saw or something. It's uh, just a dude who's trying to outwit Batman with his crazy gimmicks and puzzles, and his 
uh, egotistical nature as well as you know the fact that uh, not only is Riddler a narcissist but also like he has like a severe mental illness like I would say that he is obsessive compulsive disorder to like the a tenth degree the dude is you know got issues but did we get that from the Batman movie? No. Nah. And I'm not here to dump on the Batman movie. I'm just saying that version of the Riddler is not my favorite. I prefer the more Frank Gorson, even Jim Carrey Riddler, uh, over the likes of um, whoever played Riddler and the Batman. Which, uh, if I'm being completely honest, yes, I own it on Blu-ray. But I've only watched the film in theaters once. It wasn't enough for me to go to the theater again. Uh, at the tail end of the pandemic to see the movie twice. And I've had the movie uh, available to me to watch and I just haven't really had an interest to watch it. I'm more interested about what they're gonna do with a sequel than just rewatching the movie. My biggest criticism I think with the Batman movie is for the most part, uh, Ben Affleck's Batman was a Batman of action, you know? And we did get to see him do detective elements from his computer like Bale's Batman to some extent, um, but while we did get the detective elements that we had in um, Matt Reeves' The Batman movies, the one thing that I remember in particular, and I might be wrong, because again, I haven't really felt like watching the movie again, but when I was sitting there in the theater, to me, it felt like Battinson's Batman would always arrive after everything that had already happened. So he didn't really do a lot of fighting until the climax of the film and like the very beginning of the film. He was a Batman that was always poking around crime scenes and working with the police. And for a not origin Batman, but like a, we'll say year two Batman, it didn't really work for me because for one, Batman's supposed to be at odds with the police. And two, uh, him just showing up and basically not even doing the policeman's job for them. It's not like he was even really doing their job. It was just he's going there and he's doing his own private investigation, but it just didn't feel the same. Um, and also, like, <laughs> some points in time, I, I think that, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was a guy named Pete Holmes who did, uh, the Batman sketches on YouTube about, like, 8, 9, 10, like, 13 years ago, something like that. Uh, it was, it's been a while. Right around, I would say, the time of Arkham Knight and before is when he used to do his stuff. And he was famous for using this voice. So anyway, he's done a, a recent series called Batman Canned, which is basically Bale's Batman firing the DCU in time for uh, basically um, James Gunn's reboot of the universe, right? So he has a sketch with the Batman and uh, Bale, and Bale is making fun of Batman, the Batman, because he's basically like this angsty emo teenager that is just kind of um, reading off in a journal, almost like you're watching Death Note Batman, to some extent. And <laughs> it's a great parody, and and the more I was listening to it, it's like, oh my gosh, it is kind of right, like, because the way Batman monologues, the Batman monologues, it does, it sounds weird, like, he's just kind of there, like, you know, the symbol is not just a symbol, it's a warning, or... The rain of Gotham pours on my soul. As I sit on patrol, trying to find out about Falcone, the sweat of my brow uh, gets inside of my mouth and tastes all salty, like the salt of Gotham's wounds. You know, stuff like that. I mean, I understand that Matt Reeves was basically trying to uh, do the whole, like, Batman monologue stuff from the comics, but um, some things don't translate well. Like, Affleck wanted to do monologuing for his Batman, but, you know, just decided to be silent for a lot of his performances, which I, I think plays to the character's strength. A lot of us really prefer Batman the Animated Series to the 2004 The Batman. And I know this is not going to be a very popular opinion for people, but I feel like the Batman movie is kind of like going from the Batman the Animated Series to then... The next uh, Batman cartoon to come out was the 2004 Batman cartoon. And uh, Reno Romano, I, I believe, was the actor who played uh, Batman. He was the Spider-Man PlayStation actor in the 90s. So, as far as I know, he's the only um, Batman actor who's played both Spider-Man and Batman. But um, the way that he went about those anime episodes... or Well, it was kind of like anime. The way he went about his show is he was doing a lot of um, 
monologuing and stuff like that, as well as also he did a lot of crime scene investigation. So it's, it's kind of hard to be like, oh, the Batman movie isn't like anything we've seen before, because uh, based on all the stuff I know about Batman, it is something that I've seen before. And there's a lot of parallels to the Batman uh, cartoon show a little bit. Uh, aside from the fact that, you know, Alfred is like a, a combat butler um, teaching Bruce Wayne how to fight. Which, again, the coffee table book about the Batman, uh, which you can find. It's a hardcover. It's really nice. Uh, I don't know necessarily if that stuff was actually canon or not anymore because, I mean, it didn't really show up in the movie. And you know the whole thing with tie-in things. Like... I, for one, don't like tie-in comic books or novels because there's really no point to getting them because they're not really canon. It's just kind of like a fun little Elseworld story that if you want to learn a little bit more about the universe, you can. Um, but it's, you know, it's just companies trying to bait you to be like, hey, uh, if you really want to know more about this new world, uh, why don't you buy this book and this book? And I'm actually surprised there's not more novelizations for the Batman. Like, we're just going to have to wait until 2025 for the next movie, so to speak. But, oh, I can do freeze grenade stuff, that's right. Yoink. Now, the question was, the freeze grenade available until Mr. Freeze in the story? I don't remember. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was. Never mind. Yeah. So I'm actually getting to that point now in the uh, playthrough on Switch. Man, this game just plays so smooth. It would be nice. I agree with you guys. It would be cool uh, if they had, you know, a patch to make it 60 frames per second. But, I mean, the game's from 2015. It's eight years ago. I don't really think they're going to do that. But can we all appreciate how gorgeous this game looks for 2015? Like, the Arkham Knight game is still better visual-wise and presentation-wise than a lot of games that release today in 2023. And, I mean, Rocksteady just really just stepped it up. Unfortunately, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League does not look as good as Arkham Knight. I don't know what happened. I don't know what the design choices were with um, their character models, but Arkham Knight just shoulders above uh, the Suicide Squad in terms of visuals. I hate Harley Quinn's design. I don't really like the way Deadshot or um, Captain Boomerang look or Penguin or any of the characters. Especially for a game that's supposed to take place five years later or something like that. Penguin looks like he's super old. You could argue maybe Stress or something like that, but he just looks real bad. Um, kind of looks like Danny DeVito's Penguin a little bit. And it's like almost every time they do this like new character change or design, the characters feel very off-putting to me. They don't really work. Oh wow, I don't think I've ever done two in a row like that. Ah. Uh. Nothing like exploring the streets of Gotham. So yeah, I mean, that's that's how I feel about the Batman uh, movie. You know, I think it the sequel, just like... You know how a lot of people weren't really on board with Batman Begins? They enjoyed it, but it was like they were waiting for that really big, stellar Batman movie. And for some people, that's Dark Knight Rises. I'm not in the same camp as them. I like a lot of aspects of the Dark Knight, but I still feel like Batman Begins is a better um, Bale movie. Because it's more Batman-centered. Once you get into the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, the whole focus of the movie becomes on the villains and, you know, some of the side characters like Harvey Dent and Jim Gordon and stuff like that. Which, again, is fine. But it kind of feels like the thing that um, Christian Bale was always concerned about looking back on the original Batman movies was the fact that Batman, uh, as the films went on, Keaton through George Clooney, is he would play second fiddle to all the different famous celebrities playing villains. And you could argue, you know, well, Batman Returns had a lot of cool aspects to it. And it's like, well, yeah, totally. But, you know, Keaton was correct in that regard, too, is that in the second movie, it was all about Danny DeVito and Catwoman, which, I mean, Selena stole the show. Like, Michelle Pfeiffer was just, you know, amazing. But can you really think of anything major that Michael Keaton's Batman did in Batman Returns? He almost has less screen time in the suit than he did in the first Batman movie. And that was building up his, you know, mythos for the the universe, right? So that's that's something. Uh, but the one thing that I want to see that we've never gotten in a Batman movie is... I would love to see Mr. Freeze done right. And my fear is that Matt Reeves wouldn't do the animated series version of Mr. Freeze. Maybe he would. 
I do not want them to do the new 52 or the DC Rebirth version where they basically just made Mr. Freeze a generic uh, cold villain again, or one that's uh, obsessed with a woman from the 1950s who's not his wife. Like, that really messes up Freeze's character. It's not the same thing. But um, I'm more in the camp that for a sequel for Batman, for one, the Batman, I would like to see Batman actually fight more instead of just arrive at crime scenes after everything is already done and poke around. Um, because while the detective elements were fun, I mean, that was a whole movie. It's like Matt Reeves needs to have a proper balance between fighting, detective stuff, Batman interacting with his rogues and stuff like that. And it just needs better pacing. And um, for one, too, he needs to give us a villain that we can actually care about. Um, there was no emotional connection at all for the Riddler. The Riddler was just kind of the schizophrenic, like, um, you know, serial killer guy that wasn't really an interesting villain. I mean, say what you will about Jim Carrey's Riddler, but, I mean, they gave you a little bit more context about why he is the way he is. You actually have to read a book to understand why uh, Nigma hates the orphanage and then read uh, the special comic book series that the Riddler actor uh, wrote. But, I mean, it, it's too much serial killer and, and not so much Riddler. And we didn't really get any major death traps from the Riddler either. Like, there's supposed to be, like, these crazy uh, conundrums that Batman's supposed to solve. Like in Arkham Knight. Like, I, I like what they did in both Arkham Knight and Arkham City with the death traps. I just didn't like in Arkham Knight how everything with the Riddler was all Batmobile-centered. That's super annoying. But... It is what it is. You can't really do much. I, I would say, like, the true version of the Riddler in the Arkham games is actually Arkham City, because that feels more like something Riddler would do. Make hostages. Not just put a bomb on Catwoman and troll Batman, but, like, uh, make these elaborate death traps that Batman is going to find a way through these death traps, because he's Batman, right? He's going to easily be able to do that. Um, but, you know, what was always off-putting for the Arkham Knight game for me, looking back eight years later is, like, how did Riddler, in the time that he had, which wasn't very much, how did he have time to figure out, for one, the Batmobile that Batman would have, um, and two, like, to make these extravagant death traps tailor-made to the Batmobile, and more specifically, the Riddler knew every single aspect of Batman's new Batmobile, which Batman doesn't even debut until later on. Um, and this is what I was talking about before, the whole Arkham comics, the reason why I never do, like, a, a long-winded video, like, trying to act like an egotistical moron, saying, like, I know the definitive Batman timeline, like some YouTubers do with millions of views, um, who basically lie. Uh, like that one video I, I responded to years ago, um, which now we're just learning there's even more fallacies in that guy's, um, you know, viral video. But, I mean, here's the thing, when people lie, those videos always do better than the truth, so... Uh, not like I'm calling the guy out like he lied. I don't think that he really understood the source material enough to really go about and make his big video. Uh, one key point, exactly. The Batman bios that he never mentions. Um, he tries to connect Arkham Asylum to Arkham Origins to Arkham Knight to Arkham City. And what's different about Batman, Arkham Asylum, and Arkham City is it was written by Paul Dini. And Paul Dini was inspired by the, not New 52 Batman, which was Arkham Origins and Arkham Knight, but he was inspired by the pre-52, the Neil Adams, the uh, Denny O'Neill, the Chuck Dixon, you know, the animated series run. All that stuff was like a key aspect of Paul Dini's writing in those games, as well as the bios of how the characters met when they're speaking to Hugo Strange and stuff like that. All that's important. Mr. Freeze's bio, his tapes with Hugo Strange contradict his um, Cold Cold Heart DLC from Arkham Origins. And the thing is, this stuff was readily available for a person to actually write when they were doing um, the Arkham Origins game. Like, they literally had all this material at their feet, especially the Cold Cold Heart DLC, which took place, like, almost a year after Arkham Origins. It was, like, 2014 sometime, I believe. So, <clears throat> they had time to actually go through and be like, okay, this is what we're going to do with this. And they didn't. Um, they just kind of did their own story, which, again, is fine, but um, when you're trying to connect to a more grandiose franchise and you're calling yourself a prequel, it's not a good idea to have so many inconsistencies in your storyline, especially when stuff has already been pre-established to begin with. Like, you literally have a roadmap what to work with, and then you can kind of build up from there. Like, you can 
play in your sandbox and do your own thing. But they didn't do that. <laughs> they didn't do that at all when they did Arkham. Uh, they just kind of like were throwing darts at the board with uh, Arkham Origins. And then Rocksteady had to play nice with them and be like, all right, so apparently Firefly, even though we mentioned Firefly in Arkham City and now Ar Arkham Asylum, um, in our universe, because of what happened in Rocks uh, in Arkham Origins, we're gonna have like you know Firefly not show up again for ten years after the Arkham Origins event, and you know talk about it that way. When I mean literally, there is information about Firefly and biographies and stuff in both Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, which contradict the whole Arkham Origins thing. You just have to take a minute and read the actual lore that's established, and a good writer would be able to understand that. And that's always the problem I've had with Arkham Origins, is I, I know there's Reddit forms about me saying that I'm a huge hater. I'm not really a hater for the games. I think the game is fantastic. I think that it just falls apart a little bit with the writing, especially when you're trying to connect the dots to stuff that's already existed prior to that. Like, I'm not saying, like, prior to that in the canon. It's technically future canon, but the games came out first, so the characters should have followed that first before experimentation. Uh, which, again, writers don't like to do that anyway. Writers like to do their own thing and, you know, just focus on making a good game. That's why I don't like prequels too much. But, um, anyway, getting back to the whole Batman thing while I kind of wrap up a little bit. This is non-scripted, and this has been a long time since I've done this. But, uh, the thing that I really want to see about Matt Reeves' universe, in particular, is a villain that I actually care about. And I think that he actually could make a compelling story for both Mr. Freeze or Clayface. Clayface has never been done in the movies, ever. Um, Mr. Freeze has been done, and it wasn't handled very well, obviously. But... Um, I feel that uh, if they did Clayface, they could do kind of like the whole Clayface, uh, the Feet and Clay tragedy from the animated series, that two-part episode, and turn that into a two-hour movie, where you have this struggling actor who has like an addiction to these chemicals that he's used to change his appearance so he can keep his acting job, as well as I think you should show, you know, his fall from grace a little bit, and maybe tie it into like a... Robert Downey Jr. character, someone that the audience can actually relate to and feel bad about. Supposedly what Firefly was in the um, Batgirl movie that we'll never see. Firefly from uh, Brendan Fraser was supposed to be a character that did everything he did because of his sick wife, which, I mean, I get it. That's very Mr. Freeze-like, and I understand what the Batgirl movie was trying to do, but it's not really in um, Garfield Lynn's... Uh, wheelhouse, I guess you could say. It's it's not something that he would really do at all. Ow. Well, I had a 100-hit combo, but I forgot. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> I haven't got a 100-hit combo on the Switch at all. But anyway, uh, Shadowless Batman continues. So I think that they can make a very intricate uh, storytelling with um, whatever version of Clayface they want to use, but I hope it's the actor version. Uh, because it's just more interesting that way. And that way, when the audience actually has an emotional connection to the villain, it makes for a more interesting story because it's like, you're kind of rooting for the villain in a sense. You don't want Batman to defeat this guy because you know his hardships. You know what happened to him. You know, a horrible accident disfigured his face or whatever, whatever they want to do. And these magical chemicals that he got from either Roland Daggett or a Falcone family or maybe, who knows? Like, they could introduce like, some other crime person. Uh, that would make, like, Batman's confrontation with this tragic character more interesting. And I think it would do a lot better than the Batman. Because the Batman movie is just about Bruce Wayne kind of having this emo trip about, like, you know, am I going to be more than Batman? Am I going to be more than Vengeance? That's kind of the, the narrative of the story. If you go back and you watch it. I have a pretty good memory, but uh, Bruce Wayne wasn't really any different than Batman. He was a reclusive character that never really showed up. And then... At the end of the movie, instead of being a creature of vengeance, Batman wants to be a beacon of hope for his city, which, you know, that's actually kind of nice. Um, he goes out in public for the first time, and people see him, and he's helping people out of the water when, you know, Gotham flooded and stuff like that. It showed that he could be more than just this uh, wraith in people's mind. He could be the hero that Gotham deserves, you know? So I, I appreciated that ending. Um, and uh, I believe he calls himself Batman for the first time, or maybe the media. I don't know. They called him Vengeance. But um, again, um, we want to be able to relate a little bit to the villain and the villain's issues. Because that makes for a more 
Um, interesting dynamic between hero and villain, you know? And you definitely have to have Clayface do horrible things, but you want a little bit of sympathy from the audience, but not too much. You don't want to be like, oh, you know, this guy's evil because he, he had this happen to him. Like, you can't uh, just, like, you know, kind of shake or just ignore, like, all his horrible crimes and be like, well, you know, it's understandable that he's doing this because of this and his childhood. It's like, just because people do bad things, it doesn't give them a pass, you know what I mean? So Batman still needs to take the guy down. What I'm saying is it would make for a more interesting movie plot than what we've had. And uh, I think Matt Reeves could pull it off given prep time for the next movie. And uh, I think the technology is actually there now for a more interesting Batman uh, sequel with a, you know, never-before-used live-action villain. And I'd also like them to introduce, I think, um, Dr. Hugo Strange would work really well in the Batman universe as opposed to um, James Gunn's Batman universe. Like, you also want to keep some supernatural elements, like introduce Talia and Roz, and, you know, maybe some other Batman villains um, in Matt... Uh, in um, James Gunn's, you know, the Brave and the Bold movie that Andy Muschietti or whatever is going to do, supposedly. But I, I don't necessarily want uh, Matt Reeves' movies to be grounded in reality. I would like to see some more metahuman characters like Clayface and things like that. And Man Bat. I think that those characters would really um, complement, like, kind of this emo, gothic world that Matt Reeves has orchestrated. And I think those villains would work really, really well. But anyway, now I want to hear from you guys. How do you feel about the uh, suit of um, Matt Reeves, the Batman? Do you think it was worth eight years? <laughs> Are you upset that he doesn't have a shadow? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. I actually made a video over on my um, Let's Play channel kind of making fun of the fact that he has no shadow. But um, I just kind of wanted to uh, do this real quick to uh, give you guys a video because it's been a while. And uh, to say thank you for supporting the channel even though I can't really live stream uh, very often on this channel anymore. But, um, yeah, so it's been eight years. We had a new Arkham Knight video. I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, I hope to, for my New Year's resolution, to do more content for you guys on this channel, whether it's shorts, two-minute news videos, whatever I'm able to do. Unfortunately, as a lot has changed in eight years, I am uh, <laughs> I'm not in my 30s or my late 20s anymore. And it sucks um, how much uh, live streaming really takes out of you. It really does. But, yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas, in case I don't see you guys again. Happy New Year, and if you want to check out my Arkham Knight live streams, uh, I'll be making a playlist on this channel where you can go and watch how bad it is on Nintendo Switch. Alright guys, God bless, happy gaming, later Gothamites. Have a great holiday, and hope to see you uh, with some Batman-related content in the future.